so um, I'm going to do my presentation on digital collage uh, and, you know, and just talk about my journey so far on how I approach digital collage and how I started. Um, I suppose, I guess, I was just like everyone else at home in a lockdown situation last year. So, you know, I was living in Melbourne and the lockdown due to coronavirus happened and everyone was just at home the whole time. And I didn't really have a lot of creative outlets. So I was working as an urban designer for, um, for a government agency and I was just, you know, doing all these meetings and there was a lot of right brain thinking. So I just thought, okay, I need to use my skills because I knew how to use Photoshop. I knew how to use Illustrator. I knew all these softwares that I could use because of my profession. And I thought, okay, why not just explore something within me using Photoshop? So I just went on Instagram, just like many other people for inspiration and found a lot of amazing collages, a lot of digital work, a lot of anal analog work, just as Ika has been doing for the last 20 years, I'm guessing. So I, I really started a year ago. So for me, being exposed to all that inspiration I was like, you know what, I can, I can do this. You know, I don't really have to be an artist. I just need to know how to use the software and anyone can do it. So um, I just, you know, I suppose started by following all these different artists and you, looking out for the techniques and methods that they put out there for others to learn from. And I don't quite remember who the Instagram collage artist was, but she was like, always go look for um, creative commons images over the internet, um, make sure that you're not, you know, infringing any copyright with your images. So, you know, I went on all of these different types of websites uh, that had a whole lot of creative commons images that you could download. And I was like, whoa, this is easy. You just download a creative commons image, take it to Photoshop and you can just like go crazy with it. So a place that I started last year was by completely surrendering trusting my intuition and letting the inf infinite potential take over. Uh, so I'll just probably go through some of the works that I've been doing since last year. As you can see, there's a, you know, there's, there's a lot that I kind of talk about my identity as an Indian Maharashtra woman living in Melbourne. So obviously I bring with me my tradition as I grow up in a Western society, but there's always this expectation, you know, from your culture itself that, you know, you have to behave in a certain way. You have to, like we spoke about before, get married and have a career and, you know, it's a cycle. And I, I was a little bit overwhelmed by all of that intensity of expectation that comes culturally in a Western society where women are allowed to be free or they're told they can be free. So I was kind of exploring psychologically how I want to represent that in my collages. So a lot of it was in a way kind of therapy. So, you know, it was tough last year for everyone around the world because of coronavirus. A lot of people lost their jobs and everyone was stuck at home. So it kind of became like a melting point for me. And I was finding an outlet and collage just happened to be an outlet for me. So these are the two works, you know, that I initially put out there, which were kind of based on this um, Indian artist uh, who did a lot of lithographic work back in the day. And all of these images are ready to be remixed. So they're all kind of creative commons images. And I grew up looking at these images as a child in storybooks and in Indian calendars. And I just thought, okay, well, I grew up looking at these images and I just want to remix them in my own way. So obviously avocado as a millennial prop is my representation of how we need to slice off our tradition and, you know, focus on growing that with other things that take over our lives, such as avocado. I don't know. Avocado seems to just be a representation of modernization of a woman. Um, so that's just one of the works that, you know, I really connect with. Then there's a couple of others that I've done that hit on a similar concept of, you know, breaking through conventions, breaking through traditions, of, you know, being a woman, especially me being a woman of color in a Western society. A couple more images of that again, again, representing. So this Indian woman, uh, which is actually a Maharashtrian woman that seems to be replicated in a lot of my works is actually me. So that's how I see myself. 
And all of these images around me are a representation of how I'm breaking away from my own convention and culture. So it is a lot of my collages are centering on, on myself. So it's my identity. Again, a couple of others that I did recently. Um, so now I just want to spend the rest of my presentation talking about my, uh, my influence and my inspiration. So just around the same time that I started doing digital collages last year, I was also doing a bit of like a art course on surrealism and Dadaism. And I, I was just really fascinated by surrealism. Um, I lived in Barcelona as well. So Dali was like a big thing in my head. And I was like, oh, I want to learn about Dali and all of these other people. So surrealism was like this art movement that kind of started as a cultural movement in the 1920s. Uh, after World War One, I'm sure a lot of people know this who are doing art and know the history. I'm not an artist, as in like I'm not educated as an artist. This is just me learning myself. And for me, that was it actually really connected with me as a person because it was again about completely surrendering to your subconscious, completely surrendering to infinite, you know, potential that your mind has. So it's about having one eye on the inside and one eye on the outside. And I really like that about surrealism. So a lot of the works that inspired me like Renee McGreed and Hannah Hawk, you know, they kind of like set up this almost like a thinking framework for me. And I was able to like connect with the way they were thinking and do my own work essentially. So some of the surrealist techniques is about scale. It's about distortion, it's about fabricating your own reality and not being afraid of it. So yeah, it's also a form of resisting against conventions. So that was really, you know, what I connected with. So again, there's so much more that you can go on with in terms of influence from surrealism. Um, you know, just the element of surprise being quite a big one for collage. Actually collage, the idea of collage itself began in earlier than the 1920s, but it sort of became as an art form since the 1920s. And it used to be called photo montage back in the day. And it was just their way of like, you know, creating zines and, and like using all these found images and, you know, having this new hole created out of found images and, you know, and a, kind of embracing law of chance and like letting things happen rather than like really planning it in your head so um and it was against kind of everything being beautiful like what is this not everything has to be perfect you kind of embrace the imperfect through collage and I was like this is my thing I'm gonna do it and I did it all of last year um so this is I guess I did a bit of research on how surrealism you know back in the day has influenced collage making today and Irene Greed is like the most, I think he's the most famous surreal artist from like the 1920s onwards. And he painted this amazing, he, he just painted a lot of amazing things, but this is on the right side, uh, an artist called Ewa Truskowski. I don't actually know how to say her surname, but she referenced a lot of the surreal artwork and created her own form of, of collage. And I was like, you know what, I'm gonna do that. And so I did my own version of Son of Man. So uh, Rene Magritte did this famous painting that everyone knows, The Son of Man in the 60s. And, you know, and I was like, OK, I'm going to do a collage version of, of his painting. And for me, I called it Child of Humanity because I don't see gender as being, you know, man or woman in the future. I just think that we're children of humanity. And so my representation, obviously, of child is a feminine body because that's how I see things in a very feminine way and so I represented his work in that way so I, I really think it's a really good exercise is to get influenced by other art movements and then remaking and remixing it in your own way so I, I just thought that was a great activity to start off as an, a surreal artist. Hannah Hawk being a really famous collage artist of her time in the 19, in the 1920s so she was famous for her collages and she was the only like female collage artist back in the 20s. And again, she was given the platform just because she was dating a serial artist. And that's like kind of shit because, you know, today a woman can just be an artist, doesn't need to have a famous artist as a partner, you know. And back in the day, she was given that platform because she was married to someone who was, a, who was an artist. And so she kind of did a lot of a work based on that. She always fought for equality for women. 
and a lot of her work showed sexuality like how women were objectified for their sexual body like sexual parts and she really enhanced those inner collages and she this is a really great quote that I you know think works for everyone it's like she wrote there's no limits to materials available for pictorial collages above all they can be found in photography but also in writing in printed material even in waste products so if you're doing analog work, go through your garbage bins because you'll find lots of inspiration in there as well. Um, again, a few more images of Hannah Hawk that I'm really inspired by a lot of it. Again, talking about uh, women and how they were used in a very objectified way back in the day. And it still rings true for today as well. Like women are still portrayed in that way. And, you know, we're actually celebrated now because that's our empowering you know, we're empowered by it now. Um, Lin uh, Linda Sterling was influenced by Hannah Hawk. Again, a lot of her work, you know, is like in the 60s and 70s. And it's again, talking about, you know, the sexualization of the female body. Uh, Max Ernst, um, I just, you know, I just really like how he created grand scenes out of 19th, 19th century uh, illustrations. So, you know, for someone in the 20s didn't have access to magazines, they used old school illustrations. And I was like, you can use essentially anything you can find to create collages. Um, these are recent artists, Irina and Silvio Skelski. They live in London, they're Polish artists. And they're, I think, not sure if they're a couple or brother and sister duo, but they do tend to do uh, collages together as a team. I think that's a great exercise if you can collaborate. And Ika has already spoken about collaborating with other artists. I think that's a great tool if you can collaborate with other artists. Um, and some techniques that I've just kind of put down that surrealism is really known to use. So scale is a big thing. They love, you know, making the head bigger. It's all, you know, scale is a big thing for surrealism. Shattering, juxtapositioning, so two uneven uh, images next to each other stripping, distorting, dislocating, disorientating, sewing, smashing, nailing, flooding, emptying. So all of these are emotions. So put your emotions into the collage and have fun, I guess. And I just have some links for others if you're interested on what I think is a great inspiration for surrealism and collage. So I'm happy to share this with Jessica and she can share with whoever is interested. They have a couple of documentaries and also links to other artists and their material as well. Um, resources where you can find creative, where you can find Creative Commons images. So Pexel, Unsplash, Flickr, Wikipedia Commons, sorry. Creative Commons website also has a lot, but this is what I generally do. I do actually just go on Google search and then go in the tool section, user rights, and you click on Creative Commons licenses. You can find lots of images that have Creative Commons licenses. You just have to go and check if you're allowed to remix and use it and if you need to give credit to their image. So some most times Creative Commons licenses, you don't have to give credit because they're free for you to use and remix. And the way I first started is I started going on these websites. So I spent hours in a day on these websites, just finding images that I was attracted to or wanted to use and I saved them. So I saved like at least a hundred images per 30 minutes. And then that's like your library that you use to remix and create in, um, in collage. Uh, digital collage platform. So Photoshop is what I use because I know how to use it and I've used it professionally. Um, and there's other tools as well that you can find. Uh, Pixlr and GIMP, I've never used them, but if anyone over here has uh, any experience with using other tools, feel free to share. I think that's it. Thank you.